Richard Medhurst uh, is uh, a broadcaster extraordinaire. Uh, he broadcasts even more than I do. Uh, and the quality as well as the quantity of his efforts have made him a uh, really quite significant uh, media presence, uh, notwithstanding his young years. Richard Medhurst, uh, welcome to No to NATO. As Tara describes it there, uh, it's a bleak uh, prospect, at least for us in the West. In Britain, all of the political parties, a monolithic uh, parliament, uh, are wholeheartedly in support, not just of this assault on the people in Palestine, uh, but on the uh, Ukraine proxy war before it. In the United States, all of the political leaders, including Robert F. Kennedy Jr., are all mad for Israel, mad for war against the Palestinian people. I mean, if, if we lived in Britain or America, there's actually effectively nobody to vote for, nobody to support, because in a so-called democracy, everyone at the top is on one side. What do you think? Yeah, th th thank you, George, for the uh, kind introduction and, and for uh, everybody at No to NATO and, and the Workers' Party of Britain for, um, for their efforts. I, I think it's uh, it, you know, it's a really sad, sad state of affairs because you you uh, uh, put it very eloquently. We're kind of uh, um, we, we, we really don't have any choice at the buffet. It's it's either, um, uh, you know, red um, uh, or uh, uh, Tory war party or we can have, uh, uh, you know, blue uh, labor war party. And, and they're, they're both rabid, you know, crazy zionists and and i think it's it's um um i mean if if we had if all, if, if all our parliamentarians were like you and chris williamson i think we, we would be uh very sound and very okay but uh unfortunately it's not the case and uh like tara pointed out it's funny because um uh and, and so did you george that the republicans or uh or the the right in america uh who were against the war in ukraine just because they wanted to have something to oppose uh, Joe Biden with. Now, now they're suddenly uh, totally fine with uh, giving all this money uh, again uh, uh, because it's Israel. Um, and I think it, it's it's the same you know, sad state of affairs when you talk about China or when you talk about um, the uh, the Indo-Pacific. Uh, you know, it, instead of using uh, Israel, they, they will use Australia and then you use that as a, a, a lily pad um to go and attack uh, china or or uh, palestine in this case and i think it's very important for people to understand um that this this conflict uh again it's it's not between hamas and uh, israel it's between the palestinian people the lebanese people the syrian people and israel uh, and it goes back a long time um it's, you know and, and in 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 post war britain i i don't know what changed since since then but in post-war Britain, the, the number one threat um, to the security services in, in in England, it was the the, the Stern Gang. It was the uh, the Zionist militias that now make up the Israeli military, um, and uh, uh, you know many of the the terrorists who put bombs in the King David Hotel or uh, in in Jerusalem or in London and and were sending off letter bombs. They they went on to become prime ministers and they couldn't even visit the UK because they would have been arrested on terrorism charges for having killed so many British officers and so on. And I, so I don't, I don't know what changed in, in the UK that we now, we, we are not, we're not only okay with the Israelis, but we, we support them um, like, like, like some kind of uh, hypnosis. And, and Swella Braverman, now the Home Secretary, she's saying that she wants to maybe ban Palestinian uh, flags. And, I, and I, I saw someone being arrested, I think it was in... Uh, in Manchester for for wearing a Palestinian flag, um, and they've they've put one up, um, you know they've they've put them up actually on all government buildings. I was going to say in Sheffield, but then I remember they they've they've put them up now on on all government buildings. I I don't know what this this um, this this uh, you know can be described as except uh, war propaganda. It's just war propaganda, and the only reason that uh, many prominent European leaders supported creating in Israel was because they were actually anti-Semites and wanted to get rid of Jews in Europe. 
so I find it ironic that now if you 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 a Palestinian or you know Lebanese or Syrian, you want to resist Israeli or slash European settlers taking your land, then that makes you an anti-Semite, but not the European leaders who wanted to get rid of Jews. Um, you know, if if Ursula von der Leyen is so convinced of uh, what she's saying, um, perhaps the Germans or the French should have given the Israelis uh, th their land um, in form of reparations instead of you know taking it out on, pa on Palestine. Um, and it, it's absolutely horrific. Uh, uh, the uh, family um, that you know, 44 members of the same family killed uh, today, and tomorrow there will be another atrocity, and the day after, and it's it's. It's uh, bewildering that we cannot even keep track anymore. Uh, you know, it, it all becomes so blurry because uh, you look, you you go think of a crime of a particular crime the Israelis have committed, and you can find them having done it two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago. Um, it, it's it's all, always the same, and I don't know how uh, people allow this uh, uh, to continue. I I really find it so ironic that uh, we tell the Russians uh, that they can't bomb. Uh, the Ukrainians and cut off their water and cut off their electricity, but it's okay to cut it, you know, cut off the water and electricity for for Palestinians because they're not human beings apparently. Uh, and this is Israel defending itself. What, what what is this phrase? Israel has the right to defend itself, except propaganda. Um, you know, if if, uh, if that's them defending themselves, well, what what do they look like when they're on the offensive? Then um, the Palestinians are the ones who have the right to defend themselves, and the law is very clear about this. You know that there's it's unequivocal when it comes to uh, the UN Charter, when it comes to the Geneva Convention. The Israelis are an occupying power. Uh, the Palestinians have every right to resist. What whether they want to you know throw stones or throw rockets, it, it's their business. Uh, they the UN General Assembly has has made this clear that you can take up um, you can take up arms against an occupier. And, uh, you know, the right to national liberation, the, they, they mention all these words when it comes to Ukraine. And now when the Palestinians who have a much stronger case for this, because they're not fighting a proxy war, they're fighting an actual war of, lib of uh, it's an actual struggle of national liberation. Um, you know, these things don't matter suddenly. Uh, and um, I think it's uh, it's the reporters are also sickening because the same people who will sit down on CNN and uh, on, on the BBC and start talking about. Uh, how tragic it is in Ukraine. Uh, they they now don't want to show you that you know children can't turn on the taps uh, in Gaza. Uh, and when they do show you uh, some of the crimes the Israelis are committing, they always have to preface it by saying, "Well, Hamas terrorists uh, attacked uh, uh, the Israelis. Oh, and by the way, here are some Israeli crimes." You know, like they just want to make sure the Israelis can't uh, uh, you know um, label them as anti-Semites or something. I think the fact that they even say terrorists about Hamas is, uh, is very telling because Israel and its behavior, you know, that, that fits the bill of actual terrorism. Whereas legally speaking, morally speaking, Hamas are not terrorists. They're a Palestinian resistance group and they wouldn't even exist were it not for the Israelis. So if the Israelis are so concerned about them, they shouldn't have created the conditions and oppressed the Palestinians to the point that Hamas exists or Hezbollah exists. Yeah, again, these groups, uh, did not, you know, they they had no place in um, uh, Palestine. Uh, they they were they did not exist in in the 1940s or 50s, and yet Israel was right there committing the same crimes uh, that is it, that it is committing today. So this has been a continuous policy of genocide, of ethnic cleansing, and the Israelis have no one to blame but themselves. Uh, and you know, it, it's it's funny watching them um, talk about. Uh, uh, you know, Israelis who have have been hurt by this and that, and they these people have three, four passports. They can go wherever the hell they like. Where are the Palestinians supposed to go? They're supposed to go up in a rocket. Do they have a space program that we haven't heard about? Um, and Netanyahu, no matter how many times he says that, oh, you should get out of Gaza, which is, as I said, it's physically impossible. That does not absolve him of his crimes. Um, the the Israelis, they they should, if they really want peace, they should just go back to Eastern Europe. To Western Europe, to Australia, to Britain, it doesn't matter. But that is really the only way to fix uh, what is happening, uh, if they're even interested, which I doubt. But I, I, I always remind myself that the French kicked out, well, the Algeri the Algerians kicked out 1.5 million Frenchmen, and they thought that Algeria was part of France, and they annexed it and they carved it up into six different uh, départements, which is you know basically like like counties in France. So. You know, they, there's always hope. Uh, I, I I don't think the the Palestinians should um, uh, should fret. And right now, we've never seen 
this kind of situation where you have uh, Syria, uh, Hezbollah, and Hamas all hitting uh, Israel at the same time. You, we had it actually just once in April, uh, but now this is much more serious because the Israelis are having to stretch themselves thin, and that's why they're going and running and, and trying to get uh, you know our ships and the Americans' ships to come to the uh, you know to to come to the Mediterranean Sea and posture for them because they they are scared. Um, and you, that's why we saw so many of the Israelis running away. It, you know, the first thing they did is they they took out their passports, their three passports, and started running to the airport. You know, they're not willing to actually fight for this land because it's not theirs. So they, they don't have the same attachment to it. Palestinians got no choice. Palestinian, it's this or bust. There is not there is nothing else. There is no other option. Um, and the Israelis who have uh, weapons, who are encouraged by the government to get weapons, uh, you know, the 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 second things got serious, they fled like cowards. And that's that's the only thing they're really good at. It's coming with F-16s uh, that have been given to them by the Americans and dropping bombs on on, uh, you know, a besieged strip of beach that has no uh, you know, no conventional armed forces, no anti-aircraft. Uh, and, and that's not to say that Hamas have not become, uh, you know, ha have not advanced. Um, themselves in 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 military terms because they certainly have and they've proved that but uh we are we are not talking as, as professor merendi put it we are not talking about the same israel of 20 years ago nor nor are we talking about the same hamas or lebanon or iran or syria of 20 years ago um the the israelis have tried everything uh they 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 claim they've tried everything to fight quote unquote terrorism right and uh and uh if their policy was really to try and make the resistance weaker well they have utterly utterly failed they have the israelis have become weaker and it's the resistance that have grown stronger and i don't think many people would have expected to see all these parties working together as one and yemen and the uh, uh pmu in iraq all saying we're ready to join the fight if it comes to that um you know the, these and 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 again the, even among the palestinian groups pij and hamas and uh, the lion's den and so on. We we never saw these groups working together um, in such a level. And so that shows you that the occupation has become unbearable. And it, it's always been unbearable, but it, it has surpassed, you know, levels of evil that that uh, I think none of us can even fathom because we, we haven't lived there, uh, even though we, we, we're all aware of it and we talk about it. We cannot imagine what it's like for the Palestinians to live through that day to, uh, you know, day in, day out. And so the fact that these groups are working together it's it's not because they're good, you know, military planners, or it's not only down to that. It's because Israel has become so vicious in its policies that it has actually achieved the opposite and united um, all the people that it occupies. And uh, that doesn't mean that they won't try and bomb Gaza and and, and pummel it because they are. But uh, it, it, nothing can change what happened on October seventh. That that was a very big, uh, significant uh, military victory, and uh, you know it. it Everybody in Palestine, everybody in the Arab world, whether they like Hamas or they don't like Hamas, uh, for them to see the Palestinians overcome the Israelis, this paper tiger, and and actually break out of that prison, uh, even for if it's you know just for a few hours, as you as you mentioned, George, that was a victory, and the Israelis can never ever take that away. Richard Medhurst uh, is ironic, isn't it? That uh, for all this talk about uh, beheadings, uh, the 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 one group. Uh, of Islamist fanatics who specialized in beheadings were the ISIS and Al-Qaeda and alphabet soup of, of uh, fanatic extremism that was supported by the West in their attempt to overthrow uh, the secular government in Damascus. How's that for an irony? It's a bloody good irony. <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> I, I really find this funny because, uh, you know, f first of all, we all know this, but it, 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 it it's worth repeating that ISIS would not exist. Um, uh, it were, you know, had we not invaded um, Iraq uh, and, and created a power vacuum and then uh, also tried to uh, destroy Syria and cr another, uh, you know, created another power vacuum and allowed these groups to thrive. Um, and again, many of these terrorists in both Al Qaeda and ISIS and and Hayat Tahrir al-Sham and and 
uh, you know, all these, all these, uh, uh, this alphabet soup that, that that have been funded by Turkey and 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 Israel openly working with them. By the way, a lot of these terrorists are already known to the security services, which I always find weird because they they just always know of them and never pick them up or block them or stop them. But in any case, I, you know, you know, I I find this funny that now. Uh, they're trying to uh, shove this slogan down people's throats that Hamas is ISIS, right? They're, they're literally saying this, like Hamas is ISIS. No, it's absolutely not. I mean, this is like, I, I, I don't know how to, I don't even know what to say. It's so it, it's so barren and, and intellectually bankrupt uh, to say that. They, they, they don't even have the same political goals or ideology at all. And, and this thing with the beheadings, I mean, if, if that's the only... Not not only is it a lie, but if that's the only characteristic, then why don't we just say like the the, the French Revolution is ISIS since they cut off heads as well? I mean, this just makes no sense. Yeah. So royal heads, <laughs> royal heads. 